He was a U.S. diplomat who called Iran his home, but that home became his prison when Iranian militants held him hostage, along with 51 other Americans, for 444 days, 41 years ago. This was in Tehran. Joining us now is Barry Rosen, who is also on a hunger strike, as he says, for the others still held hostage there. Uh, Barry, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story. Obviously, a lot to ask you about, including your strike. Uh, but let me get the viewers up to par with who you are. Take us back uh, 43 years ago. Um, what happened? Uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, I would say that in 1979, on November 4th, 1979, I was in my office at the press attaché um, for the U.S. Embassy, and there a group of Iranian militants who were associated with Ayatollah Khomeini um, jumped over the, the walls of the embassy, and within a matter of hours, we were taken hostage, uh, all 52 of us, and that lasted for 444 days. We were moved from place to place, We were moved, then eventually we landed up in Evin prison, where all or most of the Iranian hostages today are now staying in. Uh, I'll get to that in just a moment. What was the treatment like when you were a hostage? Well, I would say it was devastating, and it's especially when, when you think about how I felt about Iran. I always have great admiration for Iranians and Iranian history. And Iranian culture. They're great poets and great artists, uh, and they, they've given the Muslim world a tremendous amount of, of a cultural heritage. And there I am landing up as a hostage and being uh, tortured, uh, mock executions, um, landing up in a prison, uh, horrible food, no light. It was an atrocious situation, a total denial of my human rights. How did you get free? How did that play out? These were uh, my freedom occurred because of the negotiations with uh, the Carter administration and the Iranian regime. The Carter administration had actually frozen all of the Iranian assets that were held in the United States, and the Iranians needed that money because they were fighting a war against Iraq in June of 1980. So that's when Ayatollah Khomeini commenced negotiations mm -hmm. with the United States. But it didn't, it didn't really occur. I mean, the freedom didn't occur until January 20th, 1985. What an amazing uh, story, an overwhelming story to even try to fathom what you went through as we take a look at just some of the photos of the time frame there. Um, tell me about this. You're on a hunger strike, if I understand this correctly, because as you say, there are still more than two dozen hostages in Iran. Is that correct? Yes. And in fact, it could be even more. I mean, if you count those who are not in prison, but outside of prison in some detention or, or form of detention. So I'm, I'm calling on Iran to free all the hostages immediately. And I'm calling on the United States and its allies who are in the negotiations with Iran about the nuclear program to tell Iran that unless the hostages are released, there will be no JCPOA, no, no nuclear agreement. And I also would like to add that I'm also saying to Iran and to the United States that if there is a nuclear agreement and if Iran again takes hostages, then the agreement should be null and void. Now, the, the State Department, I want to get this in, said they were moved by, it was moved, rather, by your commitment to the release of wrongfully detained Americans in Iran, which is what you're discussing on this program. Uh, meanwhile, U.S. Special Envoy for Iran, Robert Malley, told you you do not need to go on a hunger strike because the Biden administration shares the commitment you have. Do you believe they share your commitment? And then why would you still be on your hunger strike? I believe they do share my commitment. But I want to urge them to make it a priority. It's been way too long. Many people have been in prison, many hostages have been in prison for six years mm -hmm. or more. And it, it's about time that the world community, not just the United States, but the entire world community, say to Iran that no, no more hostage taking at all. The Iranian regime has two, two kind of things that they're balancing. 
being a, a normal nation state and then being a revolutionary uh, nation state. And uh, as a revolutionary nation state, they seem to use hostage diplomacy on a continuing basis. I'll leave it right there. Um, Barry Rosen sharing his very personal story and, and what he's going through now. Barry, we do appreciate that. Thank you for Thank your you. time. Wishing you the best. Thank you. Meanwhile, this it is unclear the path forward many airlines will take after the controversial play.